Martin. Hello guys, I'm back. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design. And today I'm here with my friend ah, Ahmed Hassan from Egypt to talk about process operations in Korea. And he will focus on in ethylene plants. And before we start in talking, let's warm up this meeting. Let, it, let us know where are you from, if you are a member of my Telegram channel, if you are one of my students in the e-process booster, to we have some interactions. And, and I would like to have a question from you that I can address to Hassan, and he will do his best to answer them. And it is very nice because when I did the invitation, he accepted promptly for this challenge that he is doing a live session. And be, be, moreover, he did a presentation to show us in more details how is the, the process and operations of ethylene plant. So, Hassan, please uh, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about you. And after that, I will start with the questions. Uh, okay, I have, uh, my name is Muhammad Abdus Salem uh, from Egypt. I have been graduated from engineering college in 2011. Uh, then I joined the army as a reserve officer for three years. Uh, uh, um, as you know, all of us uh, are affected by the, the, the conditions of the economy. Uh, so if the graduates who are graduated from uh, in, in, uh, in the growing economy years would have a better opportunity than who are graduated from the recession periods. I was the lucky one who is available for starting my professional career in almost a grown economy. I finished my service in Egyptian Army in 2014, and then I joined uh, the Egypt Hydrocarbon Corporation, which is a pioneer in the fertilizer corporation. I got an intensive training in Egypt Hydrocarbon Corporations too, uh, I, which helped me to post my start in uh, in the professional in my professional career. I am I am working in ethylene plant in Egypt here, which uh, which is called Egypt Hydrocarbon Corporation, uh, Egypt, Egyptian ethylene, ethylene Egyptian and derivative company, which is pioneer in uh, polyethylene. Beautiful. Um, there is a problem with my screen with my uh, video. Or? Uh, your video is not showing right now. And okay. It was showing, but it disappeared. Uh, I don't know where the... Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> now we can see you. And mm. guys, I my my notebook and the webcam is at the side of it. So I went, I will talk to... I will try to talk to you straight, look into the the mm -hmm. webcam. However, I have a questionnaire here to help me to do some questions to Hassan and also to see the chat. So if you let me know where are you from, I will be watching the chat and I will interact with you. The questions I need also to take from the chat and from my questionnaire. So sorry if sometimes I will be looking this way instead of looking straight for you. And we have some people here. Hassan, it's very nice to have some interaction with the audience. And we have Selmani, and he is, uh, he is from my Telegram channel. And Al Hassan Sid Selmani, it, it is from Middle, Middle East also, this, this, this kind of name, right? <laughs> no, no, this is me. Uh, I have the laptop and I bad to oh, uh, because yes. my my <laughs> uh, because the this is your yeah, name the uh, Muhammad Abdul Salam Hassan but I make uh, it Muhammad e. Hassan uh -huh. I use my laptop to share the presentation because the camera and laptop is not working properly so I used the iPad to contact with you and the laptop to share the, the screen. But you are in the in the YouTube channel also. What? Are you watching this this video in the YouTube? Uh, no, no. No, we have this a, is... a person, Al Hassan Sid Sal Salmani. 
He's he is following us in the YouTube. And we have Akshay Patil from India and Jubo people. Let us know where are you from, but to not take too much time, Hassan, I uh, will start with my first question. And this is a question that I address to every one of my guests. And this is why, uh, how, in fact, how you get your first job as a chemical process engineer? Uh, as I told you, uh Uh, if you are if you are lucky one who is graduated in um, in the growing economy conditions you will have the opportunity to start in the field you like uh, i uh, i started my professional career in 2014 with uh, five mega projects starting in the construction phase here in egypt so i was the lucky one to to join the egypt hydrocarbon corporation which is a fertilizer company uh, a pioneer in the low density ammonium nitrate I got an intensive training there, and it helps me in the second step, which is Ethetco. As you know, the first step is always the, the toughest one, uh, so I was the lucky one to find my way in the to the first step. And, and after the fertilizer, you spent some day, some years or some months there, and went to the ethylene process. Is that correct? How was, yeah, why, it, why did you change it or it was, you decide to change or it was not a decision of you? How, how was the transition to the, another company? Um, uh, the first step was uh, the fertilizer company, but the company has some, uh, some, some troubles because uh, there is some marketing problems and there is some, 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 uh, uh, some economic uh, financing conditions regarding the company so uh, that uh, uh, like the business you have to uh, calculating the risk uh, what is the risk if i if i uh, stay in that company what is the risk if i transit to another company so after uh, measuring the risk i found that the low risk is to go to uh, the ethylene plant because uh, the, there is a fi my, uh, the, the financing risk regarding the all the company Hydrocarbon Corporation or fertilizer company, so I decided to transit to ethylene plant. I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. And you, mm -hmm. you start with operations, but right mm -hmm. now you are wor working more with process, right? Yeah. And what is the difference from working with operations and now that you are in process? What is the difference between them? Uh, the operation department is responsible for keeping the operation of, of the equipment or different equipment within the safe limits. And also they are responsible for um, uh, preparing the equipment for the startup or making the pre-startup survey, uh, preparing the operation, uh, uh, operation procedure, operating procedures and so on. Uh, uh, preparing the or making the preparing the equipment before maintenance, which is the commissioning the equipment before uh, before maintenance. This is the operation is responsible to summarize this point. The operation is responsible for all uh, all all activities related to the operation of the and the production of the equipment. Uh, but the process department is responsible for the calculation or the or technicality of the plant. I will give you an example. If we have uh, every plant, every chemical plant have a distillation column, and as you know, the, the 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 price of the product, the cost of the utilities and the raw materials, it changes daily or it maybe it changes continuously. So you need to optimize the quality of the product or the duty of the reboiler to find the optimum profit of uh, of the operation of the distillation column. So this these parameters, you, we, you need to do some calculations to adjust the reflux ratio for example, or to adjust the boiler duty to find the optimum uh, conditions that the distillation column should, uh, should be operated to uh, make this process profitable. Uh, so, the, and the, so this is the, the, the process department is related to these calculations. Also, measuring the performance of equipment is a very important point to uh, optimize the profitability of your business. And I will discuss this point uh, especially In, uh, in another point in the presentation. Uh, all these activities related to the process department. The operation department 
should have this as uh, this is uh, parameter specified parameters from the process department and should stick to these parameters and also uh, do some troubleshooting if there is some abnormal happen to uh, bring the, the the process again to the the normal operation and it is not uh, usually the who starts with the the career of operations and take a long time in operations and it is not so easy to shift to to process i, I have been uh, i have uh, received some questions how to do this this kind of shift from operations to process for those people that already have mm. experience with operations what kind of tips you could give to them to if they want to work with process instead of operations to shift from a position to another Okay, um, the chemical engineer, uh, when he graduated from the college, has three paths he can go in. The first one is the process design engineer in an engineering company, which is this, this subject I prefer, but I don't have the opportunity to start an engineering company. And I, I, I found my first opportunity in the operation department. The second, the second path is our, the operation department, and the third path in the process department or technical department. Uh, the, to be a good uh, process engineer in, in in the manufacturing company, I for me I prefer to start in the operation department to have a physical contact with the problems in the in the in the different equipments in the plant, and then when you shift to the process department, you will find it it, it is easy. To, uh, to analyze what is going on in the, in the operation and what the problems happen here and how to solve these problems. Uh, so the, the experience of the operation is, uh, I, for me, is a fundamental for the process who is working in a manufacturing company. To shift from the operation is uh, to the process, uh, uh, you need to, to search for some opportunities to find, to find this shift. I know this shift is not easy, but you have to work for that shift and to be ready for that shift. As you know, the operation is related to the operation of the plant and the process is related to measuring the performance or doing, doing some calculation of the plant. Uh, some engineer, when he, when he is working in operation department for a longer time, he forget all calculations. So to shift from operation to uh, process, you have to be ready for that opportunity. You have to study, uh, you have to know very well how to do the activities of the, the process engineer so is supposed to do, then when you find that opportunity, you will be ready for that. But uh, the problem here is that many operation engineer who is working in the operation department, he forgot what is required uh, from him to shift from the process, from the operation to the process. And then he, uh, he just need or hope to shift from the operation to the process. So my, 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 my advice here for people who need to shift from the operation to the process is to study very well and to be ready for the, to be ready. If you, if you have an opportunity to go to the process department, you will have the skills that uh, will promote you to that opportunity. I hope you, that I answered your questions. Now, very, very nice and very complete question. And this, let me just share some, some, uh, Someone is here. As we have three participants in the meeting Zoom, I received a, a warning telling me that we need to finish this meeting. We'll finish in 10 minutes. However, we don't. We are doing that because Hassan will share the presentation with another login. So that's why we have three, meet, three participants in the meeting here. But mm. we will not finish the. If the Zoom session uh, finishes, we'll, I will open the this again to continue with the live session, okay? So you okay. don't worry about that, people. And in the future, I edit the video to, to, to solve this kind of issue. And as we have time, before we start the process, I would like to, to do some comments related to Hassan uh, answer. And I totally agree with you. Uh, when you want to, to get another position, you need to plan how to get there. And the having operating, operation experience is very important because you already know the, the kind of issues that it, it happens in real life. 
when you start in your your career in a in a design office and it's not easy to have the the whole process and we do the plan design but usually you don't go to commissioning startup and you don't go to do the troubleshooting of the plant because the design companies are very specific to design and when you have the opportunity to work in operations you know that the guy did a mistake in the design but as you are in the real life dealing with your plant you know if it, it you i would have done that to not happen again and that's why i i think that is nice to have some experience in operation I don't have my I don't build my career in operation but I have some contact because I was able to to do plant assistance and it's very nice when you have this kind of background and I will help you sorry I will ask you another thing you already did already answer uh, shared with us your experience in operations and there is something specifically that uh, operations helped you in your job as process engineer. Um, the last, uh, the last consulting service with the food and with the food industry company here in Egypt, uh, they need to uh, select a bombing station with a with a pipeline to deliver the uh, demineralized water to the to the to their factory. And the length of the of the uh, the length of this pipeline is one kilometer stainless steel pipeline. Uh, so uh, the process engineer there uh, uh, he he configured or he designed the the, the bombing station, and he went and the, the management team there uh, asked him that the the charge pipeline will be eight inch. This is this is the constraint of the project, and they they, they didn't need to invest more in the pipeline as you know if we increase the the, the thickness uh, uh, sorry the, the 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 diameter of the pipeline the weight of the pipeline would would increase and also the cost of the pipeline would increase so they they ask them that we don't we 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 can't increase the inside diameter of the pipeline to the maximum is eight inch uh, so the process engineer there to uh, to uh, to satisfying the system curve they removing the isolation valves from the pumps. We have two pumps, which uh, we should take the mineralized water from the tank and pump it to uh, to the destination away from the tank one kilometer. So they removed the, uh, the isolation uh, valves uh, from the from the both pumps because they assumed that these pumps will 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 stay uh, running normal and every turn around we will do some maintenance for these pumps. But I told him that normally you should add uh, suction valve and charge valve to isolate these pumps if there is a problem having here. And frequently we have these issues in the in the operation because maybe some the designer may may uh, maybe remove one some valves from uh, some points in the operation and you need to do some maintenance. So this is a problem. Uh, so you have to uh, do some efforts to or or. Um, to this uh, this unit uh, and so on. So I asked them that it's important to uh, install suction valve and charge valve and to install uh, the the. Uh, they removed all these fittings to satisfying the system curve. I know this is this is not acceptable, and we pursued the management to increase the the pipeline to to be a ten inch, uh, and also the the, the final uh, my point here is that. The operation is important because uh, during your working, uh, your working in operation, you are required to do some decommissioning of the units in, the, in some point. So you will figure out what is the problem or what 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 should I do in that unit to facilitate the decommissioning process. And if you are if you shift to the technical department, you will um, uh, you will you will try to collect this uh, these uh, problems. So the examples are here that I uh, faced in my uh, in in, uh, in I, uh, the experience which, which I got from the operation department, in that it, it is important to install suction valve and charge valve in that in that issue. Another important issue happened also to me, but I don't have the memory to uh, to summarize all of them. But I just give one example about it. Nice, very nice. It's the who. 
and who is already working with design, it's very important to talk to operations to know what is the issue related to the plant, uh, especially when you are working in existing plants, because there are a lot of interface and something that you may consider that is right in the real life cannot be that right that much. I will ask Hassan to start sharing the presentation related to ethylene plant and as we have few minutes in Zoom, I will finish this se session, but we will re return in the sequence in order that he can share the presentation related to ethylene plants. Okay, okay, Hassan? Okay. Now uh, to go. I will uh, finish this session and I will start another one in Zoom because we are the time is is short in Zoom. Okay. The, the remaining time is two minutes. Yeah. Yes. While you prepare yourself to, I'm oh, sorry. Hassan, while you prepare yourself to share the, the presentation with us, we have people here from Ecuador, India, and let me see if we have some kind of question here. I have a, a question for Anab Roy. He is from operations also, and he asked us what kind of software do you use in, in your process in, in your process work? Uh, uh, for me, I usually the open source uh, DWSM because it's open source software. Uh, um, because also my company doesn't have a license of Aspen. Uh, but maybe in the future we will have one. So I, I advise everyone who need to uh, use uh, the software by his, by his own experience, he can use DWSM as it is open source and has a, as an open library. Uh, but my, 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 company doesn't, my company doesn't have a license for uh, commercial simulators yet. When you are ready to share the, the TLN presentation, you are free, okay? Yeah, yeah, I can, but uh, I think you need to. Uh, another to one. You... I'm missing one participant. You need to log in with the other also. Uh, I can't share my my uh, my screen yet. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Now you may may have. Guys, uh, I'm, I'm not a, a teacher, and as you can see, I'm not a YouTuber. We are chemical process engineers that share our experience do, uh, through the internet, so be patient, and please uh, don't worry too much about that. What is important here is to share information with you. Because of that, sorry for some kind of uh, internet troubles or, or, or future troubles, okay? Hassan, it's, it's your time. I will... Okay, the, the screen is free, is free to you. Okay. Uh, 
So uh, today we will speak about the ethylene plant. Uh, we will discuss the operation of the, okay. Uh, we will discuss the, the, the uh, uh, we will discuss the uh, process description of the ethylene plant. We will discuss how to monitor your process and how to set uh, your KPIs of the plant. And we will discuss some aspects related to the process engineering, which is kinetics of the cracking, furnace efficiency, and the plotropic efficiency of the compressor. We will discuss the caustic wash or wash tower and the dryer. Uh, this is the process flow diagram of the ethylene plant. Uh, there are missing two units here, the mercury removal unit and the amine unit. I will discuss, I will explain them. Then I will go uh, in that uh, process flow diagram. Uh, the fit to ethylene plant, which can be naphtha, which can be ethane, mixture of ethane or uh, amblopane, and also it can be a pure ethane. The fit to ethylene, ethylene plant uh, is uh, passed through a fixed bed, adsorbent bed, that is specially designed to absorb mercury. Uh, the mercury uh, should be removed before, uh, uh, the, the mercury should be removed to prevent the amalgam formation in the cold box because the, the ethylene plant has a place, the aluminum heat exchanger. And if the mercury is not removed, it will form amalgam with that aluminum and the mechanical properties of the amalgam differs from the, from the uh, mechanical properties of the aluminum. So it will, make, it will fail this equipment. Uh, the mercury also uh, caught, caused a breach of pressure containment in the, in the uh, cool exchanger of the cold box. The effluent from the, from the mercury removal bed is fed to the amine unit to remove carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide using chemical reaction of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide with the amine. The amine could be primary amine or tertiary amine or secondary amine. The treated feed is then washed uh, with water in the top section of the absorber to prevent amine carryover. Uh, the treated feed is then sent to the cracking furnace, which we'll, which we'll discuss uh, later. The carbon dioxide in the treated feed shouldn't exceed uh, 100 BBM. Uh, the rich amine, which is coming from the bottom of the amine uh, from the absorber, is generated in the amine striper uh, to be used again in the absorber. There are some problems appeared in the amine unit, which is a foaming problem. Uh, which requires to inject some anti-foam chemicals into the lean circulation pump. Uh, the concentration of the anti-foam and in the lean uh, in the in the lean system is a characteristic of the vendor. And uh, and you, you can make also a trial to optimize or to minimize the consumption of this of uh, of amine uh, in your plant. So if uh, if you have uh, some foaming problems in your absorber and you need to to optimize this, you can make some trials. You can you need to adjust the injection rate of the of the uh, anti -fo anti anti foam, and then you measure uh, the pressure drop over uh, over the column and and so on. Uh, there is some characteristic regarding the amine. Also, we need to, uh, from from time to time, we need to do reclaiming of the amine solution by intermittent distillation of a side stream of the lean uh, amine from the bottom of the saber to regenerate the amine from the residuals of the salts that happened in the amine uh, after some uh, some period or some cycle of the of the regeneration. Uh, the treated feed from from the amine is uh, amine unit is then sent to the cracking furnace through preheating section. And this is the, 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 this is the top of the preheating section. Uh, as we will mention later, ethylene yield decreases with increasing partial pressure of hydrocarbons. So diluting the treated feed with steam, it is important to maintain high ethylene yield. The mixture is heated in an economizer heat exchanger. The, 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 the treated feed from the amine unit it then um, is, is, in, is, uh, is routed or is sent to the first economizer to, uh, to preheat the feed before injecting it to or before sending it to the convection section. And then uh, the, the, the effluent or the, the feed or the crack or the feed from the convection section is sent to the second economizer, economizer which is used to preheat the cracked gas a little bit before injecting it to the, the, the radiant section in the cracking furnace. This steps is you need to preheating the, or you need to heating the cracked feed slightly before injecting it to the uh, radiation zone in the cracking furnace. The effluent from the furnace is cooled in the first economizer. And you, as I mentioned, the first economizer is used to, um, 
preheating the cracked gas before injecting it to the, the, the radiation zone. And then the, fur the further cooled in the secondary economizer before being routed to the quench tower. The oh, quench Hassan, tower. Hassan, please. Hmm? Uh, can hmm? you use the mouse to show in which part of the process you are explaining? Uh, I, oh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, but these details, these heat exchangers is not mentioned here in, uh, in, ah, uh, in, in the, the process. Yeah, this is a block flow diagram. So I, I, I am discussing the, what, what is going on exactly. But here is mentioned only that the feed is sent to the radiation zone, which okay. is not real. But uh, I will I will repeat this part again. But the treated feed is uh, before going to this convection zone. We have two heat exchangers here. The first one we need to uh, to heat uh, the, the the feed to the cracking furnace a little bit before sending it to the quench to to the convection section. Then the outlet from the convection section is sent to a second heat exchanger to uh, to increasing the temperature of the of the feed a little bit again before sending it to the to the convection, to the radiation zone. And this is to uh, increasing the temperature gradually before, uh, be, be, without injecting the feed directly to the, the radiation zone, it will uh, increase the cook formation. So this uh, says this design is, uh, is uh, uh, the purpose of this design is to reuse the cook formation in the coils. Uh, the effluent from the cracking furnace, the effluent from the cracking furnace we need to cool down this. Uh, we need to cool down these gases before sending uh, sending them to the quench tower, because uh, the more the gases will be, uh, the, the high temperature the gases will be, the more uh, cook formation will be. So we need to, uh, as as much as we can, we need to cool down the gases after going out from the cracking furnace. So. The effluent from the cracking furnace will, will be sent to the first economizer, which is used to heat up the gas, uh, the, uh, the, the feed gas, before sending it to the convection section. And then the, uh, the, the, the I need to summarize it exactly uh, correctly for me, for the people to or simplifying them to the people. We have two two economizer here or two heat exchangers. The first one is used to heat the, the feed before injecting it to the radiation zone. And the second heat exchanger is used to cool down the effluent that coming out from the cracking furnace further before sending it to the quench tower. So regarding the, the, the effluent from the, the cracked gas, the effluent from the cracked gas will go to the first economizer, then will go to the second economizer, then will go to the quench tower. And this is to cool down the, the effluent from the cracking furnace before sending it to the quench tower, which we will cool the gas further by counter current of the water. Uh, uh, in the quench tower, uh, we have uh, we, we cool down by direct contact of the of the cracked gas with the water. So uh, uh, there is some hydrocarbon contained condensed in that uh, in the quench tower. And this condensed hydrocarbon are drained uh, discontinuously and bombed away, uh, so uh, they can be used as a fuel in the boiler. And we know we need to uh, to monitor the pH of the quench water to prevent corrosion and fouling. Uh, the the feed to the quench the feed uh, or the effluent from the cracking furnace is fed to the bottom of the quench tower, and. Um, the water is fed to the top of the quench tower, so there is a counter current between the water and the cracked gas. So we cool down the gas uh, to maybe 41 centigrade uh, degree, and the water coming out coming from the bottom of the quench uh, tower, we need to cool down using the air coolers and heat ex heat exchangers to cool down and send them back to the top of the quench tower. Uh, the condensed hydrocarbons which is formed in the in the quench tower. We need to discontinuously sever, um, drain them to a tank to be used as a fuel. The vapors from the, the from the overhead of the quench tower is sent to the compression system, uh, which is a multi-stage compressor uh, compressor um, to increase the pressure a little bit to uh, the desired pressure the, for the separation in the cold section. Between the third stage and the fourth stage, or according to your licensor, some, some plants have a fifth stage compressor. 
we have a, a caustic wash uh, wash tower which is designed to be at a pressure of almost 15 bar gauge so if your plant have a uh, five stage compressors you will find that the caustic tower will be uh, at the, after the the discharge of the compressor that will achieve a 15 bar gauge uh, the feed, the cracked gas, as we mentioned, the cracked gas from the quench overhead, from the quench tower, is, is sent to the, 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 the compressor, which is compressed, and then to the quench, the caustic quench tower to remove the uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, because the carbon dioxide, the problems in the carbon dioxide here is that we, uh, we, uh, it will, it can be solidified in the, in the cold box uh, at a higher concentration, and if at a lower concentrations, it may be uh, contaminated our product. So we need to remove the carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide in the caustic wash tower. We use the amine unit, and the amine is used to remove a large concentration. The feed uh, to the amine unit uh, normally is 15% of carbon dioxide, and the effluent from the amine unit is 100 BBM uh, carbon dioxide. But in, uh, in the caustic tower, the feed to the caustic tower is designed to be maximum 400 BBM and we need to remove uh, carbon dioxide and the specs at the overhead of the caustic tower is uh, is to be 10 bbm of carbon dioxide the effluent from the carbon from the caustic wash tower is fed to the fourth stage of the compressor which is compressed to maybe 35 bar gauge and then to some heat exchangers before sending it to the dryer uh, these heat exchangers uh, the purpose of these heat exchangers is to reduce the, the water vapor content in the gas. As we decrease the temperature of the gas, uh, there is a more condensed water will, will, uh, will happen and we can separate uh, we can separate many condensed uh, hydrocarbons and condensed water from the, from the gas and send back to the quench tower. Uh, so we decreased the, the, the vapor load on the dryer. And after the dryer, we have a several separation units in the cold box. Before the cold box, we have a benzene wash tower which our, our dryer effluent wash tower is to remove the benzene and toluene and so on because these uh, components will be solidified at the temperature of the cold box. So we remove them and we send directly to the deethanizer. Uh, the overhead of the cold uh, uh, benzene wash tower should be before the cold box. The overhead of the, of the reflux drum of the benzene wash tower would be sent to the cold box, which is uh, cooled further and further and then is sent to the demethanizer, which we will separate the, the, the bottom of the demethanizer as uh, the, the bottom product of the demethanizer should be uh, free from methane and um, the specs is to be maximum 500 BBM of methane. And then send, the bottom of the demethanizer is sent to the deethanizer. The demethanizer is a, is a distillation column, so we need a reboiler and a, a, a condenser. The condenser of the demethanizer normally is a kind of hydrogen expander. In the cold box, after a several separation uh, drum in the cold box, there is a generated hydrogen, which is sent to the expander, and then the, the outlet from the expander is sent again to the cold box. The overhead from the demethanizer is, is sent to the cold box, which is here is drawn only separated, but it's sent to the cold box. Uh, so it will, uh, it will be condensed and send back to the reflux drum of the demethanizer. So we we can consider here the hydrogen expander at the condenser of the demethanizer because it is it is so it, it should provide the duty required by the by the condenser of the of the demethanizer. The bottom the reboiler of the demethanizer is the feed. We we use the feed to the demethanizer as a reboiler of the demethanizer. Uh, the bottom of the demethanizer is sent to the demethanizer. In our plant, also the bottom of the demethanizer is sent to the, the the cold box to be heated a little a little bit, and we use the the and we and it can help us to improve the efficiency of the cold box, and then uh, coming out from the cold box to the deethanizer, which we sub, which is supposed to separate uh, C three plus from uh, from uh, at the bottom, and the C two plus will be separated at the overhead product. The condenser here in the in the deethanizer is a partial pressure condenser, so uh, not all vapors, not all overhead is condensed. So uh, the uh, after after uh, after uh, passing through the condenser of the overhead of the deethanizer, 
the, there is also the reflux drum was sent back, the propane condensed of the deethanizer is sent back to the deethanizer. The overhead should be free from, uh, from uh, propane or C3 and uh, the, the specs of the overhead of the deethanizer shouldn't exceed 800 uh, BBM of the of propadine. The bottom is sent to the, the butadiene column or whatever, and we will explain this later. Uh, the overhead of the deethanizer was sent to the acetylene converter. So there, is a, there is a reactor here should convert the acetylene to uh, ethylene and ethane because acetylene uh, is contaminating our, uh, our product. Um, we use hydrogen, pure hydrogen from BSA. Also, the, cold the hydrogen that is produced in the cold box is used, a part of it is used in the, in the expander to, uh, to, to be acted as a condenser for the demethanizer. And the remaining part is used in the pressure swing absorption unit, which produce uh, pure hydrogen, 100% uh, pure hydrogen. Which is used in the in the in the hydrogenation of acetylene in the in the acetylene hydro acetylene remover reactor, which is a backed bed reactor. The effluent from the acetylene converter is cooled and then going back to the fractionator, which is a C two C C ethane ethylene splitter. The product is uh, the product is uh, ethylene product is separated from the from the top. And the bottom is the ethane, which is which can be stored in uh, in spheres, or can be recycled back to the furnace to be used as a feed. Uh, the, this is our and the ethylene product is our product. I will speak about another stream, which is the bottom of the deethanizer that is sent to the deprobenizer. We have the stream here. Is has the stream the stream this stream uh, composition is C three plus. So we need in the deprobenizer to remove the C3 from C4 plus. So we inject it to the deprobenizer. In our plant, we don't have a map to converter because the map to converter is used in the LPG units. So our in our plant, the bottom of the deprobenizer is sent directly to the deprobenizer, which we remove C3 from C4. The C3 is separated as a top product and the C4 is separated as a bottom product, which is a C4 plus. Um, we uh, we have another columns here after uh, which is the debutanizers which we remove uh, the C4 from as a bottom, as a top product and the C5 plus as a bottom product. This is a brief description of the ethylene plant. So if anyone have has uh, has a uh, has any point uh, in that uh, in the in the plus flow diagram, I can I can explain more. It was a lot of information, Hassan. And I, I'm not familiar with the ethylene plant, and uh, I think that based on the the PNID, sorry, in the block flow diagram and your explanation, I I learn a little bit more about this. And guys, if you have any questions specific about this block flow sheet, let us know in the comments. And what is the MAPD? Yeah, this is a burbadine. Probadine C C three H four. This is a methyl maybe methyl acet acetylene. Uh, this, uh, this is a chemical compound. Maybe the, maybe the converter which was which is also a probadine because this compound has uh, maybe has two. I don't exactly know its name in the chemistry. Have two uh, two phenomena and uh, the uh, has two 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 conditions and it, it is converted. To another formula and so on. I don't exactly its name in the chemistry, but this is uh, maybe two isomers and it is converted from maybe isomer A and isomer B and it's converted directly to uh, two states. But we can, uh, it is also a probadiene, C3HO4. You, you will talk about the most common causes of shutdown of the plant? The most common of what? Ca causes of shutdown. What kind of which part of the process you have most uh, more trouble to to keep the the product specification or that uh, the the equipment fails or something like that? Uh, we have two uh, we have two categories here. If we are talking about the troubleshooting, as there is some problems in the product quality, so uh, I think that this is the final distillation column is the most important one because it will affect our product. 
But if we uh, if we uh, discussing the troubleshooting as how, what is the worst case scenario or which equipment would be damaged if there is maybe power outage of the plant happen. So this is our, this is the furnace uh, would be the worst uh, or the most damaged plant uh, equipment if there is a power outage of the plant. So it is protected by the safety and instrumented system SIS uh, to uh, to correct the or to mit mitigate the consequence of what uh, the problems of the power outage. Okay, you can go on with your presentation, no problem. Uh, okay, uh, another point here, we, we, uh, there is also an uh, important study during the, the hydrochemical, uh, the hydrocarbon plants, is the high integrity pressure protection system, which is used normally to, uh, to optimize the, the design of the plant safely. I will explain uh, this aspect. If we have a gas pipeline, uh, around 600 kilometer uh, from, um, from from point A and to the destination point B. So the pressure of the point A is 16 bar gauge and the, the, the pressure at the point B is maybe 10 bar gauge. So to design this pipeline, we need to design the, uh, we need to make the design pressure of this pipeline to be 600 bar gauge as if, if, the, if there is an inlet valve at destination point B and this valve closes, the pressure inside the pipeline would increase to, to 16 bar gauge. So if we make the design pressure of this pipeline blue than 16 bar gauge, the, pipe, the, the pipeline may fail if the, uh, the inlet valve of the point B closes. So we need to do the HIPS study of the high integrity pressure protection system. As we mentioned, the, 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 we call the pressure at point B the valve B, and the pressure and the, the valve at point B the valve B, and the valve at point A the valve A. So this study uh, relates to the SIS system also, but with a safety and instrumented level three. So we need to to make sure that the valve uh, the, the inlet valve to the pipeline would close before the outlet valve would close to make sure that the, the pressure inside the pipeline wouldn't exceed the specified design pressure. This is called the high integrity pressure protection system. And this study can be used to reduce the capacity of the flare system. We have one in, that, in our plan and we uh, used this, and the sensor exactly used this uh, study to mitigate, to reduce the, the, the capacity of the flare by, by implementing uh, uh, some safety and instrumented functions in some points in the plant to minimize the flaring from the, its point, from these points. So I can go uh, further if, if anyone have uh, doesn't have a question in that point. You can go further, no problem. Hmm. Um, uh, we need to discuss the KPIs and how to monitor the, the KPIs of the plant. But let me to figure out Oh, okay, um, uh, uh, there is some 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 chemical engineer uh, th think about measuring the performance of the plant is a kind of uh, doing what we have learned in the in the industry, what uh, or what we have learned in the in the college, but uh, setting KPI is a very important, especially in optimizing your or uh, your business. I will show you an example. If we are measuring the performance of heat exchanger. And we used the parameters, uh, the overall heat transfer coefficients times the area as a parameter for measuring the performance of this exchanger. And we, if we measuring the, the, the behavior of uh, this term with the time, we will find that it is deteriorating with the time. So by measuring the performance, we can do some regressions and know when this heat exchangers would fail. So we would ask our planning department that the heat exchangers would fail maybe on July 2021. So the planning department would, pre would prepare for the maintenance before that time. But if we don't measure the performance of the plant, so the planning department and the maintenance department may uh, purchase the, 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 the spare parts for this equipment maybe by one by January 2021. 
So if we assume that this, the cost of the spare parts is $1 million, and uh, the planning department bought the uh, purchased this spare parts at January 2021, and it's supposed to purchase it in July 2021, Do, using uh, simple calculations, which is a time value of money, we lose $60,000. $60, uh, because we didn't measure the performance of the plant and we didn't have some regulations of, uh, of when this equipment would fail. So measuring the, 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 the performance of the plant is a very important point. There is uh, some KPIs for the, or the general KPIs for the plant, which is a product, uh, which is a product ratio, which is defined by the product quantity, by, by the feed product, and the timing of, the, of, the, of this KPIs would be pretty good. And the rating um, um, minimum is zero, and the maximum depends on the product and the equipment. Equipment, and uh, as the pressure ratio, uh, the, the higher the pressure ratio, the, the higher performance of our plant. Another one is the unit energy consumption, and the unit energy consumption is the energy consumed by the product quantity, uh, and this is also a breadwork. And here, the lower the energy consumption, the better the the better will be our plant. Uh, the third one is the quality ratio, and the quality ratio is the good quantity by the produced quantity. Uh, and this is also the breadwork, uh, breadwork uh, parameter. And the trend, the higher of the quality ratio, the better our performance of the plant. Uh, the fourth one is the equipment load rate. And the description of this equipment load rate can be calculated by the feed quantity, by the rated feed quantity. And it, also it is a breadwork uh, parameter. And and this is this is doesn't um, we, we don't have a specific trend for the equipment load rate, but we need to measure the equipment load rate. For example, I need to know this equipment has a seven, seventy percent load on that equipment or eighty percent load of that equipment. It should include it in the performance of the plant because it it can be used in the uh, in the reliability of the plant. Uh, here we will speak about the cracking uh, operation furnace. Uh, Hassan, uh, let, let me do some comments before you proceed. And mm. that's, that's very nice what you have shown because people that start their career in plan design, in design office, don't, don't have this kind of vision. And that's why it is nice to have some operations experience because this mm. is the, the life of the operations, right? To keep these KPIs as good as possible. And once you, you shift from the operations to, to process, now you know where you need to, to what you need to, to care about to have a product more sustainable, right? Mm. Uh, again, please. Um, now that you, you have background in operations and this kind of stuff you learned in operations, right? It was not in process. Uh, yeah, it is. It is prepared in the process. It is prepared in the process, not in the operation. Uh, yeah, uh, is the process that that he follow this kind of KPIs in your plant? Yeah. Ah, okay. Also, there is another. There is another uh, KPIs also for for uh, specific for each equipment. But this is this is a general KPIs for the plant. Ah, nice, nice. In the plants that I've been working on. This kind of follow-up is done by the operation team. It is follow up by the guy responsible for the operations. And in the in, in plan design, we don't we don't look too much to this kind of, of uh, KPIs. We need to care about the the scope project and uh, scope cost and scale and schedule. And of course, when you are doing a plan design, you, you try to have a uh, low cost as possible and with the quality that the, the customer wants from, from, the, from us, the suppliers. But uh, keep in mind that you, know, you need to have these at least four, four KPIs during your plan design. It's very good because it helps you use to help you to to increase the value of the product of your plant, so that's very nice and very nice to share with this uh, this with us. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Uh, the, we, now we will discuss some uh, simple Kraken uh, reaction kinetics. Uh, uh, this is the we have. Uh, I simplified uh, uh, the, these uh, five reactions, and I will show you what is the effect of the increasing temperature on conversion and what is the effect of increasing pressure on the ethylene yield. Uh, but there are many reactions happened, and I. Uh, in the last slide in this presentation, I bought some reference so you can check if you need more uh, more about the reaction kinetics. But I will use these uh, these parameters and the reaction rate constants to measure the conversion, the effect of temperature on the on the conversion. So I will go to the next slide. Here I calculated the the, the reaction rate constant for the first reaction and for the second reaction and for the same reaction at 700 degrees Celsius and 800 degrees Celsius. And 900 degrees Celsius, and we will figure the ratio for the first and second and third reaction. We find that the ratio increased much more from 900 to 700. So it means that the conversion would increase with increasing temperature. Okay, uh, we will use the uh, the fourth and fifth reaction to measure or to find the effect of the temperature on the ethylenium. So here we will uh, will use the reaction rate constant on the on the fourth reaction and the fifth reaction at 700 and 800 and 900 so we will we we find that that at higher temperature the 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 reaction 4 is favored over reaction 5 so it's a linear increasing with increasing temperature so here we have by increasing temperature we uh, we have uh, in the conversion increases and also the ethylene yield increases. Uh, another point, uh, this is also the uh, I picked the two reactions: the reaction ethylene production and ethylene consumption. And this is the behavior of the rate of reaction with or no the, the reaction rate constant with the temperature. And this is according to 700 and 800 and, and so on. Uh, here. We will find also the effect of the pressure on the ethylene selectivity or the ethylene yield. And here we find that the, the net production of the ethylene, the net production of the ethylene here is the rate of reaction four minus rate of reaction five. This is a net production of the ethylene. So we will uh, put these parameters here and we will find that, uh, that uh, there, is, uh, there is a misconception here because there is another, uh, another part of the of the equation uh, because the, the, the fourth reaction is proportional to the total pressure and the fifth reaction is proportional to the square of the total pressure. So by increasing the pressure, the reaction five is favored over the reaction four. So uh, ethylene production or the ethylene yield is, uh, is lowered or is decreased by increasing the uh, pressure. Uh, because we because this is a problem because the ethylene production is favored by the low hydrocarbon partial pressure, we uh, add uh, dilution steam with the cracked gas or the feed gas to the cracking furnace. Any point in that part or? No, you can go. Hmm. Uh, now we will speak about the, heat, the, the heater efficiency. The heater efficiency can be calculated by the ratio of the absorbed heat to the fired heat based on the lower heating value of the, of the fuel. Uh, the limitations here, it's uh, we can maximize the, the efficiency by keeping the air and the fuel flows as close as to the symmetric condition. And also we can minimize the fuel, the, the flow gas temperature leaving in the stack. As we know, the, the, the heater efficiency is calculated by the ratio of absorbed heat uh, to the fired heat. So the ratio of absorbed heat can be maximizing by uh, minimizing the flow gas temperature leaving the stack. But both uh, these units, these uh, points, two points, have limitations. It's not suitable to carry out the combustion process at stoichiometric conditions. As you know, to make a complete combustion, we need a certain amount of excess air uh, to, uh, to 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 be added. So uh, for the for the gas fuels, we need 10% of for the gaseous fuel and 15% for the liquid fuels. Another point is not possible to minimize the flow, the flow gas temperature leaving the stack. And, and the flow gas contains a water vapor and carbon dioxide. If we decrease temperature of the flow gases to uh, blue water dew point, uh, the carbon uh, carbonic acid could form and result in the corrosion. Uh, another uh, point, as more feed added, uh, as more feed added to the, 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 the furnace, we need more fuel. So the, 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 the flow gas temperature 
living in the stack would increase. So the, the, the factors affecting the efficiency is that if we increase the capacity, the efficiency would decrease. Also, the excess air, if we increase the air, we decrease the efficiency. As we increase the air, we inc uh, as more feed here is on the, the I will explain again the, the capacity. As, as more feed is processed, the firing rate is increased, resulting in the increase in the flow gases. So the efficiency would decrease. Uh, the fouling in the in the in the in the inside coils uh, would affect our efficiency because we need more fuels to affect to to adjust the coil outlet temperature. So we need more fuels, and uh, also the flow gas temperature leaving the stack would increase. So the efficiency of the heaters would decrease. Uh, this is all about the heater efficiency and how can how uh, how can be calculated. Uh, the, the the efficiency of the heaters, as I mentioned is the heat uh, absorbed by the by the process by the heated gained by the or added by the by by the flow gases so we can calculate the key the heat absorbed equal the mass flow rate of the of the process times the, the times the lower heating value of the gas the, the mass of the fuel times the, the lower heating value of the gas uh, plus the mass of the air of the the mass of the air uh, times the ensemble of the air plus the mass of the fuel times the ensemble of the fuel minus minus losses minus ensemble in the flow gases and the, the fire can be calculated by the mass of the of the fuel times the lower heating value any point in that slide it's fine you can go uh, another point is the compressor polytropic efficiency the way we can calculate the polytropic efficiency using these correlations the polytropic efficiency is important to measuring the performance of the of the compressor over uh, over the time uh, and the polytropic efficiency may decrease because of uh, some contamination in the blades of the compressor and so on uh, in our in the ethylene plant there is some formid polymers in the ethylene uh, in the in the compressor blades so we inject the wash oil to reduce or minimize the, the build up of these polymers in the blades of the compressor uh, uh, we here we will speak about the caustic tower as i mentioned before the caustic tower removed the carbon dioxide to a lower bbm uh, than uh, a mean unit the carbon dioxide specifications maximum is five bbm weight and the hydrogen sulfide is maximum two bbm weight the reaction of the carbon dioxide, the action of hydrogen sulfide is much faster than the reaction of carbon dioxide. So the performance of the caustic tower is measured against the reaction of the caustic of the carbon dioxide. Uh, four variables that can be manipulated to optimize the caustic tower: the caustic tower circulation rates, because reaction rates increasing by the increasing circulation rates. The caustic circulations, but the caustic circulations could be optimized because if we increase the concentration too much, we motivate the polymerization reaction happened in the tower. And if we decrease the concentrations uh, too low, the, we, there, there, there may be some possibilities of a breakthrough, carbon dioxide breakthrough from the tower. The feed heat temperature is an important parameter uh, to optimize the, the formation of the, of the polymers inside the tower. As we increase the temperature uh, too much, uh, the reaction rate can, can, uh, constant would increase, so the polymerization reaction, the polymerization rate would increase in the, inside the tower. And if we decrease the temperature below a certain point, uh, there is some condensation happening inside the con uh, caustic tower, which will promote the polymerization reaction. Uh, this is the dryer, and the dryer is consists of three zones: the equilibrium zone, which is the initial zone, uh, which uh, which is the first zone, and the mass transfer zone, and the active zone. And with the time, the mass transfer zone increases and the active zone decreases. Uh, yeah. till, and, uh, till we find that the, the, the dryer will be, and also that with the time, the equilibrium zone increases with the mass transfer zones decrease. If the whole bed of the dryer uh, becoming the equilibrium zone, then will, the breakthrough will happen um, uh, over the dryer. And here we will have the dynamic capacity uh, behavior over the number of regeneration. As we increase the number of regeneration, the dynamic capacity of the dryer would increase, and also the cycle time would increase with that, with increasing the number of regeneration. So it's important to to optimize the uh, the regeneration of uh, the, the the operation of the dryer. Um, we can optimize the operation of the dryer by adjusting the inlet temperature of the cracked gas uh, to the uh, to the dryer. As we we decrease the temperature too much. We separate too much water content from the vapor, but uh, we have uh, a risk of uh, of going to the hydrate formation zone. 
So we, we you should draw your uh, system hydrate formation curve to determine at which it, at which temperature the uh, and at which temperature and pressure the hydrate would would form. And is, this is the reference. This kind of 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 dryer. Um, it is a, a PSA or a TSA or no. it's just a PSA. No, no. Uh, it's a solid desiccant, a molecular sieve, three angles. Okay. And also there is a, there is a paper I published on LinkedIn to calculate uh, the hydrate formation temperature uh, because I think it's uh, there is no more time now to uh, discuss this. But I just explained the, 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 the basic I mean, the important to calculate the dynamic capacity of the drill over time and to forecast uh, the performance of the drill over in the future. And this is the reference I mentioned regarding the kinetics of the steam cracking. And uh, I think in this, in this, in the second one, you will have maybe 10 reaction kinetics with the reaction rate constant. Uh, you can uh, find uh, them. In. Any questions? I think that it, it was too much information that we don't have questions because a lot, a lot of information. And let me ask you, you, you said that you don't have uh, Aspen High Seas available in your company, but that you use DWC. Uh, was you able to simulate all the process, or you just was able to simulate in DWC specific equipment for your process? Uh, I didn't try uh, to simulate the whole process in, uh, in DWSM. Uh, when we are in the, in, the, in the construction phase, the contractor of our company is Toyo. So I tried with, uh, with, uh, with my friend in Toyo to simulate the, the, the whole plant, but I have some problems because, as you know, if you simulate the whole plant, the, 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 the simulation program would go, would go larger and you will need um, more powerful computers than my laptop. So, so I didn't try to simulate the whole plant. I tried to simulate a specific equipment using uh, using the DWC. Okay. And the DWC is enough to you to help you to verify the plant performance, right? Yeah. Oh, nice. And, uh, and exactly in the distillation column, it's a, I think a distillation column is more uh, important uh, equipment in the plant to optimize because it uses steam and maybe a reboiling uh, DOT, it using condenser DOT. And also the product is also coming out from the distillation column. So, so it's important to, to, to buy the distillation column. I have seen in your LinkedIn that you have sharing uh, information about Bob, uh, Mobatex uh, process simulation or simulator, something like that. Why uh, you get interested on that? And can you explain a little bit for people if they mm -hmm. Why someone should should learn more about tech software? Because we have a lot of software available in the market. Why we we need to to learn one more? Uh, uh, my uh, I finished my master of science in mathematical modeling and simulation of ammonia oxidation reactor. So I like modeling, and Mobatech Modeler is uh, is one of an equation based modeling software. It's not. Uh, it also has uh, his own packages. Inside, so you can select compressors and had had, uh, and it has its own models and the compressors. But it also have an important feature is that you can write your mathematical equation describing your system, and then you the Mobatic modeler will compile these equations to be solved by Mobatic modeler. Uh, you can use Python uh, um, instead of Mobatic modeler. You can use Python to write your mathematical model and then uh, solve it. But you you should. If you if you are going to use Python, you should know how to uh, solve the differential equation using Python. In Mobatic Modeler, it's it's a very easy to write your own mathematical equations, and then uh, the equation the, the the Mobatic Modeler will solve it for you. I can share one of uh, one of the one of the generated. I can share with you one of the of the of the generated models by Mobatic Modeler if it's if the time is is okay. You, okay, uh, you mentioned about the master degree and what, how important was the master degree to the work, to the job that you do in the, in, the, in the plant? How is the relation about having a master degree and increasing your skills in the job? 
uh, there is no direct relationship between my master of science degree and, uh, and my work in the plant as I started my master of science studies after graduation directly. And, uh, and uh, I started it at a part of time. And during the period of the master of science studies, I joined the military here. Uh, this is an obligation here in Egypt. So uh, uh, during my my during my preparation or my working on my on master of science, I didn't have a professional career yet. Mm -hmm. So I finished it in the in the mathematical modeling of the ammonia oxidation reactor. But after graduations, uh, I uh, started operation then process. It's important. It's it's helpful in 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 the mathematical modeling at all because in some points in your plant you need to do some mathematical modeling to describe some systems. And to to and the mathematical modeling is very important uh, to help you taking decisions and to improve your decision taking process. So it helps me as a as a modeling, not at the, uh, the chemical engineering also only, but also at the modeling uh, skills. It's it's uh, it's helpful. You will share the the Mobatech simulation now, or you will send to us after the meeting. What do you prefer? Excuse me again. Uh, I think it, uh, it's, it's open now. I'm seeing the I'm seeing the presentation. A presentation only. Yes. So okay, I will uh, stop sharing the presentation. Uh, then I will open. Please. Guys, if, while Hassan is loading the, the simulation from Abatec, he is a chemical process engineer working with a process in an industrial plant, and it is a, a different, different rules from chemical process engineers that work with plant design, and it is different from people that work only with operations. And what the Hassan is sharing, he, is sharing with us here is his point of view related how is the the rules of the chemical process engineer supporting operations in an industrial plant so okay go ahead and now with this is the decision column and we go further depth in the decision column we find five trays and if we go further in one tray we will find that this is the tray or the liquid and the gas if we will go here we will find that these equations uh, governing the, the, the behavior or the describing the, the, the liquid phase. And if we will go here, we will find that this is the, the equation describing the gas phase. These equations and are inside the software or you write them? No, you write. You write them. You, you click here and you then define the equation and write the equation and then click okay. and write the equation and then click OK. So these equations it should be added. The only equation that generated directly by the software is the mass balance and the energy balance. This okay. only these equations are generated directly by the software. And then after after making this uh, the, the, the simulation, you just need to compile the system here. Uh, now the, 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 the software is ready and your equations is compiled. So you can run the equations here. Uh, we can start the heat source. So we because describing, we, we, click, we clicked off the heat source. So as we close the boiler with a valve, so the temperature started to decrease. If we decrease here to maybe 5%, we will declare that the flow is starting to decrease. Uh, this is kind of the, the, the modeling. Uh, but I, I like but it, uh, I like it because uh, you have the option to uh, write down your mathematical equations inside the software and the software co will compile it for you. Um, uh, I think Aspen has uh, Aspen custom modeler, but I didn't try I didn't use it before. You can customize that to your plant, right? And the yeah. software, commercial software will give you a, a generic model, and in this case, you can uh, tailor one just for you. Exactly, exactly. Okay, Hassan. And uh, I have a question here. How someone can have the Mobatech? Is it uh, open source? 
No, no, it is uh, provided by maybe a uh, Danish company, uh, Mobatech. Uh, it's called Mobatech, and uh, this is educational license. I think it's cost uh, maybe uh, three, uh, 350 euro. Uh, so I think it's affordable. I tried to contact Aspen uh, maybe from four or five years to uh, to acquire an educational license, but it was too, too, too expensive. So I think it's, uh, it's easy to, for everyone, I think, to acquire this uh, software. Uh, it's not uh, too much uh, expensive. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a uh, annually. I think 350, uh, maybe 350 euro, I think. I don't remember exactly. But it's but a, I think a, it, a license, a forever license, or it's a 12 month sub subscription? No, yearly, uh, yearly, uh, yearly subscription. Okay. Yes, guys. And, but take aware that is not like high spend high seas. You need to know how to, to build your models in order to, to be able to use this, this software. It's, it's very nice and very useful for people that uh, know that what they are doing. It's not like a video game. You need to you need to to do your own models, right? Right, Hassan. Uh, also, another important another <laughs> feature, but also to summarize the, the concept of the Mobatech, you have also your library models, which is consist of heat exchangers, with compressors, and you can uh, click here just and bring it here. So it has own equations. If you go go here, it has own equations. So it also has, and it also has a library, uh, but I think uh, it, uh, it, it's important to uh, know how to write your own equations. Okay. Hassan, we are going to the to the end of this this meeting, and I know that you have some some actions sharing uh, your experience in the internet. And we started talking in LinkedIn. I met Hassan in LinkedIn, and since then we have become friends. And please let let people know where they can find more information or more for from your experience in the in the, in the internet. I know that you have a Facebook fan page and you have a YouTube channel. Can you share them with us? Talk a little bit about them. You can, uh, I, you can close the, the sharing, okay? Let's let's return to the full screen. Uh, I started my my YouTube channel uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe I think uh, two months ago, uh, and I I asked Jefferson firstly uh, for some advices of how can I uh, motivate the, this step. Uh, I know that to start your YouTube channel is a very, uh, it, it seems a very task, uh, easily, easy task, but it's not because you have to uh, prepare uh, the content for your video and then capturing the video and then editing the video. So it's not easy task. I uh, started my YouTube channel and uh, I have two only videos yet. The first video discussing the Binger Robinson uh, thermodynamic probability of equation and what is going on. Uh, the, the aim of the video is to what is going under the hood. If you select the Binger Robinson in any simulation software, what the software do for you. And the second video is an introduction for the oil and gas separator design. And uh, I give only the, in, the introduction for the separators. What are what is the type of the separators? What is the function? And what are the internals? In the next video, I I will discuss in more depth how to size, how to use the simple equations to design the oil and gas separators. Uh, in LinkedIn, also I try to uh, share um, a content or a paper of, for content uh, containing one or two piece of papers to describe a point in the chemical engineering. And. and You can share the link for your Facebook Facebook in the chat, so I can copy and and share with people in the chat. Uh, okay. And your Facebook is a fan page, open fan page. Uh, it's a page, non AI. It's a page. Mm. Yeah, it is. Uh, I send I send it in the in the in the chat. Uh, Al Hati 
Uh, sorry, guys. My I I'm a Brazilian, and my English is not so good. And when I saw uh, Middle East names, it sometimes it's hard to me to to expel that or to to pronounce out pronounce that right. So thanks, Abdu. I will show that, and Abdu is thanking you for the lecture. It was very informative and very complete. And guys, I will share with you the fan page of Hassan, and you can can subscribe to his fan page because there he also uh, share his experience and he gets. Uh, important information related to process engineering and share with people there. And Hassan, guys, if you have any question, please let us know because I'm I'm starting, I'm close to finish this lesson or this class live session. Thanks a lot, Hassan, for accepting my invitation, and it Thank is you. very nice to 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 know that you accepted my my challenge because the first time that we do a, a live session is very uh, thrilling it, i was getting very nervous first time that when i did that and that's why i keep doing because we we cannot mind what people thinks about us we we just can go and we, with time we get better and better and i hope that you do that also and of course, if you need any help in your YouTube channel, if you want to do any live session there, I, you are free to invite me anytime. And for sure, I will accept any kind of invitation of you. And thank you, Jefferson. Thank you. Uh, uh, Abdu is, is asking for your LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, profile. If you can, I, can share also, I will share in the chat. And I, uh, I I pasted it in the in the chat also. And guys, in any case, this live session will be available in my YouTube and in the description. I will update the description and I will add information related to the Hassan YouTube channel, Facebook, and the LinkedIn uh, link also. Okay. So Hassan, it's up to you. Please share your final comments or considerations that you would like to, to share with people that follow us up to here. We are talking uh, around one hour and 20 minutes. So please. Uh, okay, my final word is for, for everyone is to keep learning and to keep uh, going. And uh, you don't think that you know all things. Keep learning and keep uh, and continuous improvement for everyone is is a way of life. So Asa, see you soon. Bye bye, my friend. And bye bye. Up to the next challenge. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Jefferson. Bye bye.